Can we stop DK grip? I'm gonna go dragon real quick. I'm on the hunt right now. I trigger dark, trigger dark, trigger dark. I sweep, I sweep, I sweep. Oh my god! Oh, we just destroyed him. Oh! Red, red, red. What's up again? It's on the mall, I'm getting out of here. They're all dead, they're all dead. Warrior's dead, kill war. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. I'm on a rogue now. I have freedom for you in a sec, too. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Dude, our rat just ran up and killed I freedom thick, I, I freedom thick. Dude, uh, dude. Yo, what is up, YouTube? I know it's been a while, but we're coming back with a nice little guide for you guys here. It's a good one. It's rat paladins. Obviously, everybody knows this class has been uh, busted since the rework. But uh, here is a guide that I've, this is what I've been playing after the nerfs. It's still really strong even after the wall of nerfs that it got. And I've been messing around with a few of the specs and this is so far, this is the one I've been liking the most and I've been having the most success with. So I'm gonna go over it with you guys and you guys could try it out yourselves and see how you do with it. Um, this is This works for RBGs and arenas. There's a few things I change depending on what they are. Um, so we're gonna get right into it. First off, um, just to give you guys a little rundown of the races you wanna pick for Rhett Paladins. Um, Dark Iron Dwarf is a, is a really, really good racial right now. Counters a lot of stuff. Um, it did lose a little bit of value because Acer Rogues aren't as prevalent anymore. Uh, that was like the main reason people were going Dark Iron for Acer Rogues. Um, so you could also be human. Double double uh, on use trinket is, or double uh, damage trinket is really good. You can also go, um, if you're Horde, you want to go Torrin. War Stomp can get you kills. War Stomp, people die in War Stomps a lot. So, you know. It's always an option too. Those are pretty much the three main races that I would play if you want to be serious about um, World of Warcraft PvP. But obviously, it's not that big of a deal. You can play whatever you want. You'll you'll still be all right if you're playing casually. Uh, let's get in right into it to the talents here. Uh, this is the three spec. Um, you have all your auras here. Obviously, uh, Rat Aura gives you damage. Diva Aura gives you damage reduction. Concentration Aura for the casting reduction. Um, the aura here, from what I've seen other people use and from what I've been testing, it's kind of preference. You could play Ret Aura or you could play Diva Aura. Ret Aura gives you damage and it also it actually procs a lot, believe it or not. 30% of your health happens quite a lot. Um, usually against like heavy burst comps, you would want to play it. You would play this more so than like a like an Affliction Warlock. He's probably not going to do 30% of your health. You won't proc very often. So I would just go with Diva Aura if you're up against something like that. Um, you want to obviously you want to play double freedom no matter what this is this is not optional some of these talents you could switch around a little bit but this one you cannot um i swapped over to seal of order instead of fading light because they nerfed fading light pretty heavily and uh, i think seal of order is it passes it up now um as far as the cc is concerned you can play blinding light or repentance depending on what your team is lacking i think blinding light is generally the better option but if you have uh, let's say like an R Druid and a Warlock or something on your team, something with like a lot of a lot of fear DRs, right? You don't really have much else, and you feel like you can get reps off without uh, breaking or nerfing your damage too much. Repentance could be useful. I've seen people use it. I've seen it have success, but uh, generally blind is easier to play and uh, more consistent. Um, you can also swap to the Long Steed if you need a little bit more distance. Now let's go over to the right side for the actual damage traits. Uh, so Vanguard of Justice is what people were playing before the nerf. They haven't actually updated the tooltip for this, but it's no longer 20% increased damage. It's actually nerfed. Uh, I believe it's either 10 or 15%, but this damage talent is actually an overall, this talent right here is actually an overall damage nerf. So playing without this talent will actually give you more consistent damage. Your burst global, like your burst globals will be a little bit less but your overall damage throughout the course of a match is much higher without this talent so a lot of rats have been opting to play without this myself included um i've seen a few different specs people run a lot of people some people run extra execution as well or divine auxiliary i have personally been messing around with this consecration build and i like it a lot uh basically the only difference between this and what the other rats are running is you play consecrated ground which your consecration slows people by 50 percent and makes it bigger and then you play Consecrated Blade. So every time you Blade of Justice, every 10 seconds, it puts down a Consecrate, which is basically a free slow. And if you want to play Hollowed Ground, it basically gives your whole team, everyone who walks in your Consecrate, a free freedom and a free slow. It's actually really, really strong. Um, and I think it's a little underrated by a lot of other people who aren't playing this spec. But just trust me, 
try this out and you will love the mobility that you get and your team will also love it especially in the, in rbgs or or random battlegrounds you know like on a silver shard mine you put down a consecrate your whole team has freedom that's pretty insane and the whole enemy team is slowed by 50 percent it, that's that's a pretty big swing of mobility in favor of your team um they, they nerfed um inquisitor's ire a little bit but it's still good you still want to play it it's still free damage basically on your burst windows um as far as pvp talents go obviously the one everyone's been complaining about judgments of the pure absolutely insane honor talent you might as well abuse this until it gets nerfed or removed it might just get straight up removed. I don't know how they can balance this thing, but basically every time you judge a target, it cleanses off all uh, a disease, a poison, and a magic on everybody on your team who's in your aura, right? So if a hunt, if your teammate gets trapped by a hunter, you judge the hunter, boom, the trap is cleansed. That's pretty insane. Uh, so many people are, this is all over Twitter, it's all over Reddit. Everyone's complaining about judgments of the pure. So whenever you go up against anything that you want to dispel their, their debuffs, like an Ellie Shaman, a hunter a mage you just play this and it completely counters them on accident it's insane ever ever like i said everybody's complaining about it so you might as well abuse it while you can right uh blessing of spell warning is a new honor talent they just added also insane it, it gives you a it, it gives you another option of bop it shares a cooldown with normal blessing and protection so you don't want to play this all the time like if you're against like a melee cleave you don't you don't want to play this unless they, it's like a rat paladin maybe because you can negate all of the rat paladin's damage it's all magic right and it lasts 10 seconds it's crazy and it, it cannot be dispelled it can be mass dispelled but it cannot be dispelled it's it's absolutely insane definitely something you want to consider taking up versus caster cleaves or just any team with strong magic damage or burst it also stops cc so you can put it on your healer when he's about to get hit with the long cc chain it's it's really good as well the honor talents are very very flexible you want to play different things blessing of sanctuary is a this has been around for a while gets your heal out of, out of fears out of stuns low cooldown 45 seconds definitely want to play this every single game almost in threes you can play it in rbgs but uh it's a little bit harder to utilize and um maybe like on a flag map on defense it could be really powerful for your fc stuff like that um now let's go a little bit more into the basic rotation uh the basic rotation is going to be you judge, you use Blade of Justice, and you use a Spender. The judge gives you your proc. As you can see, I have a debuff right here, Imperi Imperian Legacy. There's actually two, and then Consecrated Blade, which is the free Consecration, right? But Imperian Legacy, whenever I judge, it makes my next final verdict proc a free Divine Storm. So it's it's a lot of burst in one global. Uh, you can do this, and then you wings, boom. That's big damn right there. You, you would want a Final Reckoning first as well. But I'll go over that in the burst rotation. I'm just going over the basic when you have no cooldowns up rotation. You want to use judgment, put up your debuffs here, buffs your next two holy power abilities, use them, and then another judge. Build up the holy power. Constantly use your holy power. You never want to be holy power capped using holy power generators. You always want to be spending your holy power as you get it. Never waste your holy power. Just And Final Verdict has a 20 yard range. So you can be pressing this while you're chasing somebody. It's, you're, you're almost a range class now with the changes, right? Look how far I can hit this target dummy. I think I can hit him even farther. Blade of Justice also has a 20 yard range. So believe it or not, Red Paladins are almost a hybrid class now. They have like half their abilities are ranged, half their abilities are melee. It's pretty pretty crazy, but a uh, very high quality of life for the Red Paladins, lacking the mobility and stuff like that. Now we're gonna go over the burst window, what you wanna do to get the maximum burst. So usually what I do, um, let me spend all my combo points. Let's just say we're walking straight into a fight with no combo points, all right? So we're walking in, the, the gates just opened, the, the RPG match just started. This is what you would, would wanna do. You come into the fight, maybe even pre-shield if you think you're gonna be focused. Um, get your global out quick, that way you don't have to press it in the middle of your rotation. So let's just say I'm gonna get focused here. Pop that, run in, pop of damage. Wings Divine Toll, Final Verd or Final Reckoning, boom. Wake of Ashes, Final Verdict, Final Verdict. And then you just want to be cranking out the Final Verdicts as much as you can during that uh, Final Reckoning window right there. As you can see, they're hitting way harder now with the Judgment and the Final Reckoning. Just crank out those Final Verdicts as much as you can in your Wings window. Use Make sure you use Hammer uh, Wrath as for your generator here, because you can press it during your Wings without the HP restriction and just Constantly generate, constantly dump during your, your window. 
Uh, another thing is you want to make sure you press Wake of Ashes on basically on cooldown. It's insane damage. It generates three Holy Power. It's it, it's one of your highest burst abilities, and it's on such a short cooldown. You need to just be pressing it on cooldown. Now we're going to be going over the defensives a little bit. Obviously, we have the classic Ret Bubble Divine Shield. Uh, something you know it has a long cooldown, 3.5 minute cooldown. You want to be using this uh, when you basically when you have to. It's good to bubble high in anticipation of damage. That way your healer doesn't have to expend his mana or his resources to, to top you back up. You could, you, you, of course, you want to use it low when you're about to die. But ideally, the more damage you absorb with the immunity, the better, the, the more useful your bubble becomes. You have a new uh, divine protection is now baseline. This used to be a talent you have to choice. Now it's baseline. It's basically a shield wall. You can press it while you're stunned, which is insane. Very useful for Red Palons who used to just die in stuns and nothing to, to press. You have the Shield of Vengeance, which has been a button for a while as well, but now it's only a one minute cooldown instead of one minute 30. Very high quality life change for Red right here. Again, it's just a big shield and it bursts for damage when it's absorbed or broken. The damage isn't as, uh, isn't as big as it used to be, but you know, it's a defensive. We don't need it to burst people, right? Um, it, it's 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 much better as a defensive now than it used to be as like a hybrid damage slash defensive spell. Now it's just a defensive spell, um, and it's much more powerful with the lower cooldown. Um, Lay on hands is now usable in rated PvP. Something this is something people aren't used to. So I've actually seen a lot of rep paladins um, that just don't even spec into it, and to me that's crazy because this is so strong. Not only can you use it on yourself. But you can use it on a healer, you can use it on your teammate. It's it's a, basically an emergency heal for anybody in your team. It's it's required. Don't don't ever not spec into lay on hands. I, I don't know I don't know why I've been seeing this. I saw another guide on YouTube where they weren't spec into lay on hands, and uh, it blew my mind. Why why would you not play this? They must have not known that you can't you can use it because it's it's insane. Let's see how much it just healed me for 340k. Right, it's basically a full heal for your teammate minus. Uh, healing reductions and stuff like that. You can even use it on yourself if you've already exhausted your bop and your bubble and you're not on 4 BR. So just spec and play on hands, it's crazy. It also gets, uh, the cooldown also gets lowered depending on the HP of the target you press. So it can even be lowered to a 3.5 minute cooldown if they're really low. Definitely, or it's actually 60% cooldown. So it could be lowered to a three minute cooldown basically uh, if, you, if you do it on target that's low, so. Land hands is something crazy new they added. It's it's insane. Make sure you spec into it. Uh, use it effectively. The more defensive tools that you have that aren't really cooldowns. If you look at the talent choices I played, um, there's guided prayer, which is basically a free wog when you get to low HP. Uh, I've tested between these two, the two of these, lights glory, lights uh, light celerity, and guided prayer, and I've just been getting so much more value out of uh, light celerity. The consistent healing that you get from this, it's just an instant cast, boom. It just healed me for 41k, right? It can crit, so it's big crit. It's, and with, with this passive right here where you auto attacks, you don't have to Crusader Strike as your filler. So you actually have a lot of free globals as Ret now to just toss out a flash heal on yourself, toss out a flash heal on your healer. The off heals from this are, are, in my opinion, much more valuable than the Guided Prayer. But if you are dying in burst windows and that's the only time you're dying, you know, that you don't need consistent healing against a certain comp or something like that. You could always opt in to take Guided Prayer. But generally, I've been just playing Light Celerity. I've been getting a lot more value out of it. I think it's much better overall than the other option. So try it for yourself. See how you like it. Obviously, it's it, you know, it all comes down to preference here. But if you get used to playing with Light Celerity and you get used to playing and pressing your Flash Heal on cooldown to heal yourself or somebody else, you will start to notice how powerful this talent actually is. It's it's a free off heal, and with wings up, it can crit for up to over 100k, which is insane for an instant cast heal on a six second cooldown. It's crazy. So just try it out yourselves. Let me know what you guys think about it between these two. But I'm telling you right now, you will love light celerity once you start playing with it. Now I'm gonna start going over some more things that will just help you improve. Um, not only just with rat, but this also applies to other classes as well. You want to make sure that you get really good macros down. Rep Paladins are very, very heavily reliant on macro usage. You want to get macros for Sank. You want to get macros for your bops. You want Party 1, Party 2. You can do an individual on your healer. However you want to design, there's multiple ways to design your macros. People have preferences, like some people use Party 1, Party 2. Some people just put the names in. You can do whatever you want here. It's very up to preference here, but just make sure that you have ideal macros for yourself 
and you need a lot of them on rent. You need Bop, you need Freedom, you need Sanctuary, you need, there's a lot of macros. Of course, you want like a kick macro. This goes for every class, you know, a focus kick or whatever you want to use, focus hodge, stuff like that. But for Rhett, I just want to emphasize this more and more because Rhett has a lot of utility for your teammates. And if you don't have macros for these, you're going to find yourself just being slow. You're going to you're gonna be clicking on the frames and stuff like that in Arena and trying to, trying to get your bops out quickly and your sinks out quickly and your cleanses and your heals. And it, it's just going to be overall slower for you if you don't have macros for this. So make sure that you have macros in place before you queue up or just, you know, gradually use one at a time, right? If you're, if you're, if you're not, if you're not familiar with using these types of macros, just start with one, start with the bop, right? The part the party one or the healer bop or whatever you want to do. Start using that mess around with it a little bit. Once you get used to that, add another one, add a, a cleanse, right? start using that just slowly build yourself up with these new keybinds and these new macros and stuff like that and it will improve your gameplay massively this is this can be applied to every other class too but with rets i it's just so important because they have so many buttons that you have to press on your teammates so many quick high reflex utility buttons that you have to press at the perfect time or they just won't be as useful so again get your macros ready Look, there's plenty of guides out there. There's plenty of ways to get your macros and you can get really complex with these macros too, if you want. Um, I, I know for Holy Paladin, for example, I have a macro where if I'm targeting a, friend, a friendly and I press judge, it'll automatically assist them and judge a target. And if I'm targeting the enemy, it just judges my target, stuff like that. Macros are your best friend with Red Paladins and in, in WoW in general, but specifically with Red Paladins. So make sure that you get these macros in. I think that pretty much wraps up the basics of this guide. If you guys have any more questions or, or any comments like that, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Like and subscribe for more content. Go ahead and check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash easygamel if you wanna see some live gameplay or if you have any questions, you wanna just get instant feedback. Um, I know I've been slacking on the YouTube guys, but I'm gonna be pumping out much more content now, much more guides. Uh, obviously, if you guys have seen our Twitch, we've been doing solo shuffle tournaments like that. We just had a solo shuffle tournament with a four, almost a $4,000 cash prize. We did a 1v1 tournament with a $5,000 cash prize. So if you're interested in stuff like that as well, make sure you guys follow the Twitch, check out our Discord and stuff like that because we, we are gonna be hosting a lot more community tournaments for you guys. And we're just constantly dedicated to providing you guys content like this. So be sure to like and subscribe, check out the Twitch, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.